Hi everyone, it's Andrea here and today I'm going to do a March wrap up. Now, I didn't read much in March again. I've got to admit I only read four books, but I thought I will just give you a quick wrap up. Just so you know, we're on the 13th of March, um, April when I'm filming this. I've already finished four books and I'm halfway through book five. So hopefully we will get a few more in this month. We're getting back in, up to speed now after having my baby. It's been really hard work. So. What did I read in March? Well, okay, so the first book I read was um, The Girl, Marilyn Monroe, The Making, uh, sorry, Marilyn Monroe, Seven, Seven Year Itch, and The Making of an Unlikely Feminist. This is by Michelle Morgan. This is an advanced reader copy. This book is not out until May. Yeah, May this year. So I was lucky enough to receive an ARC from the publisher. I will be doing a full video review on this book at some point, as well as a full written review on my blog, booksbooksbooks.com blog uh, if you want to go and have a look um, but at the moment I'm waiting to see to get the the full version as well the the final copy just so that I can check anything through it so this follows uh, Marilyn through the making of the seven year rich 1956 Prince and Showgirl bus stop and all that era and how Marilyn is actually one of the earliest feminists um, for many years we've been told that she was a bimbo that she was stupid this wasn't a stupid woman by all means she did set up her own production company she did fight with the studios and break away because she wanted better parts more money and just wanted to be treated with a bit more respect a stupid woman would not have done this uh, once again Michelle reports the facts in her own imitable style without too much scandal and gossip though it's mentioned if it's if it's per pertinent to the book I really enjoyed this if you are a Marilyn fan and you're interested in the early days of feminism it is definitely worth picking up I love it but I will be doing a full review later once I get the, the finished copy through so that's that one that was the first one I read I must admit I was very excited uh, to receive this and very grateful to Michelle and her publisher for letting me have a advanced copy I'll be keeping that in my Marilyn collection I finally finished the Harry Potter original sevens by reading Deathly Hallows. I loved this one. I think it's one of my favourites in the series. So clever. J.K. Rowling, always. You can't go wrong. Um, I do have um, The Cursed Child to read. I also have The Cuckoo's Calling, which is her Robert Galbraith first strike novel. So I'm going to see how that goes at some point. But yes, Harry Potter, what more can I say? I really enjoyed this one. Obviously, it's quite thick. So this did take me a while to get through, especially when it, you're trying to deal with a new baby as well. It's very, very difficult to read, um, which is why I've been listening to audiobooks a bit lately. Next on to the Stephen King book of the month which is Dolores Claiborne. This tells the story of a woman accused of murdering her employer who has um, basically fell down the stairs and died. She was old, she was frail. Um, she often had panic attacks. She would see things that went there. She was delirious at many occasions. However, there was rumours uh, going around the town that 20 or so years before, Dolores Claiborne had killed her husband, which she had. Um, and she freely admits it. However, she did not kill her employer. And it tells the story of um, how she killed her husband, why she killed her husband. He wasn't a very nice person. Let's just go on with that. And uh, also goes on to say what happens after her employer dies. Her employer was a millionaire. So, and she leaves everything to Dolores, which is why they think she might have killed her. But uh, she didn't. But I'm not going to tell you anymore. I'm not going to tell you what she did with them. Um, the money that she inherited. It's a really good story as she tells you all about um, her employer Vera and her life and her children and and so on. Another great one from Stephen King. I really like this book because there are nods in this to Gerald's Game. Um, if you remember we read Gerald's Game last year and in that it tells the story of this woman and it flashes back to something that happened in her past uh, during an eclipse. Well this book, part of this book is set during that same eclipse and Dolores Caban keeps seeing, I think her name was Susan in Gerald's Game, uh, keeps seeing Susan as a little girl during the eclipse. So it's, that's a little bit of supernatural in there. It's quite interesting that he uh, put that in there. I really enjoyed that part of it. And the last book I read in uh, March was uh, by one of my favourite authors. And that is Peter James. And it is Faith. This is one of the older ones. It's more of a thriller than a supernatural. So what happens is Faith is married to a very respected plastic surgeon who has um, done her 
face to you know and her body and improve the way she looks because that's what he wants he's very meticulous he likes order to the point that his child his son is not allowed to have things out of place everything's got to be put away before he gets home from work all this trouble it's a trait he picked up from his father um before him so but faith um they discover that she's seriously ill uh with a very rare disease and her husband and ross ross uh, his is his name take keeps it from her so the doctor tells ross not faith for some reason faith is the name of his wife um and he tries all these experimental drugs she doesn't believe they're going to work she actually finds out what's wrong with her because she meets a alternative doctor a uh, therapist um and she decides that she wants to try this alternative therapy rather than the test drugs which you know there's no guarantee it's going to work it's she's a test subject so she could be on a placebo anyway it doesn't mean she's getting what they call the active medicine um, and so she turns her back on alternative medicine and runs away with this Dr. Oliver something. I think it's Oliver. It's Oliver. Um, and her husband goes crazy and basically tries to kill her. But I'm not going to tell you the entire story and what happens is a lot more to it than that. I love Peter James. This is a really good one. He's got a new one coming out if it's not out already. I must get it soon. I love Peter James. He is one of my favourite authors and I will be definitely definitely recommending this if you like these sorts of thrillers um you keep thinking oh my god this guy is nuts the husband and he is totally crazy he is batshit crazy as you will find out if you read the book and i really recommend you do so that is my very short wrap up for march i did only read those four books i'm hoping to get nearer to double digits because i'm falling way behind on my goodreads challenge um, but I, like I said, I am listening to audiobooks as well, so I'm hoping that that's going to help. So that's all for me. If you've read any of the books, let me know. Let me know what you think. If, you, if I've encouraged you, uh, you know, enticed you to read any of these, please let me know as well. If I can, I will leave links to these books um, down below in the description. If they're Amazon links, just to let you know that I am an Amazon affiliate. And if you click on one of those links, I will receive a small commission from your purchase. And that goes for Amazon UK and Amazon.com. That's all from me. I hope to see you soon. Bye now.